Well, tomorrow at lunchtime, Man City will be taking Liverpool at the Etihad Stadium. A stadium that really says close to 53,400 people occupy all their seats. But funny enough, they can't fill up their stadium. That is Man City. And to my own surprise, they want to add on other 7,000 seats. So to it that their stadium really capacitates 60,000 people. I don't know what's the aim, but I don't see them even filling it because they are not able to fill 53,000 seater and they want to extend to 60,000. I don't know what was the anticipation because for teams like Manchester United, they are, they've got in close to 140,000 <coughs> people interested in buying what we call season tickets. It shows you how Ten Hag is going to need to turn around that club of Manchester and how big it is because when you look at that, that means the entire season is, can be bought. It can be sold out, but they cannot sell out tickets like that. So I think Man City still have a long way to go to reach the levels of Arsenal, Manchester United and Liverpool. They still have a long way to go. But welcome to Rokani Media Football. How are you guys and where are you watching us from? Rokan David is my name and we are here to break down the game of Liverpool and Man City. We all understand that <clears throat> Man City is just a team playing onto a lot of pressure. That's it. They're really playing onto a lot of pressure because when you look at how everything is really standing in, <clears throat> the Premier League table is totally in favor of a team called Arsenal. Arsenal is having 69 points. Man City is having 61. They are having a game in hand. And one that can serve as a game in hand is that they're going to play against Liverpool because Arsenal is going to be playing later. If Man City find themselves in a winning position, they would have closed down on Arsenal and the points in between the two teams will be five. If City happens to draw and Arsenal wins against Leeds, Arsenal will be 10 points ahead of City. If Liverpool happen to beat City, then it will be a different case altogether for a side known as City because Arsenal would have gone 11 points clear ahead of City. So for Pep Guardiola, this is a do all die game. That's it. Every game that is left to play this season, it's supposed to be treated with the required consent. That's it. Because if he doesn't, Arsenal will even lift the league before even the season comes to an end. And if I told you a City, you wouldn't like to give Arsenal an opportunity to win the league even before the season comes to an end. I think it would have been better to see to it that at least Arsenal wins the trophy on the last day of the season. Not so. When we go to Liverpool, Liverpool is seven points off the top four spots. You get Spurs is placed fourth. They're having 49 points and they play two more games than Liverpool. If Liverpool wins their two games they have in hand, they'll find themselves in a position of being just one point behind. Uh, they'll be one point. They'll be one point behind Spurs. So that shows you that Liverpool needs to win the game against. Liverpool needs to win the game against City. Do you know why? that they're out of the title race the only thing they can secure for this season and celebrate it is only one it's them going in and really qualifying for the champions league why if they don't qualify for the champions league that means they won't be able to purchase and bring in the players they are really in need of judy bellingham cannot come to liverpool for the champions league i doubt whether he can go to liverpool that means they would have gifted him to either man city or real madrid of which i believe Man City will win the rest. That's it. Because when I look at Judy Bellingham, he's just a player who just wants to play in the Premier League. I know Real Madrid are really fighting hard to get him on, but I think he's, <clears throat> he's eyeing to come to the Premier League. And uh, when you look at Man City, they're having lots of things to do to convince him to join them. They're having the money, they're having everything, and they're really a decent team and having one of the best managers in the world known as Pep Guardiola. So Liverpool are fighting for only one thing this season, the fourth spot <coughs> of the league. So the game is really crucial to both teams. And that brings us to how the teams are really going to go ahead and really line up and who is really available. When you look at Man City, most of the players are available apart from Phil Foden. Today, the manager has confirmed to us that after that appendix surgery, he is going to be out for two weeks. So, <clears throat> but for Erling Haaland, a statement has been issued by Pep Guardiola that we will see today at Etihad, the doctors and the player will decide how he feels. I spoke with him. He feels good. We will see life is risk in these stages. We have to take it. Now, 
you know Pep Guardiola and Man City if he's your team are really caught into a hard a rock and a hard place do you know why they are having their strike I was gonna have to score 42 goals this season and in the previous two games he played for Man City <coughs> he scored eight goals five against RB Leipzig and a hat-trick <coughs> against Burnley in the FA Cup and their hands are really tied and they have nothing to do because you are going to play Bayern Munich in the league sorry in the Champions League quarterfinal and you need <coughs> to really close in at Arsenal what do you do when you're playing Liverpool and you're having er Erin Haaland who really got a groin injury and never even played for the Norwegian national team <coughs> so as it stands it's really tricky but I believe he's going to be part of the team He's going to be part of the team and that means that the lineup is going to be ederson in goal right back is going to be kyle walker left back nathan ake ruben diaz and a kanji central defense then rodri ika gundogan and kevin de Bruyne are going to be in the midfield three then riyad maharez <clears throat> as a right forward jack grealish having a brilliant form playing on the left side and then <clears throat> Erin Haaland will lead the line for team known as Man City. If at all he passes the late fitness test, he's going to be assessed yesterday, but I think he's going to play that game. He's going to play that game. I think they rest him in the game they're going to play. I think they're having a game against Southampton over the weekend. They can rest him into that game and then prepare him for the game of Bayern Munich on Tuesday, according to me. When you look at Liverpool, they're having a boost of Luis Diaz returning from injury. And um, I think Thiago Alcantara is really a doubt also, <clears throat> but most of the players of Liverpool are really available. But that means their stand, their predicted starting level is going to be Alisson in goal, Trent right back, left back, Robertson, central defense. It's going to be, um, I think, Konate and Virgil van Dijk. Then the midfield three, <clears throat> it will call for the services of Jordan Henderson, um <clears throat> Fabinho and uh Harvey Elliott all budgetic those three then the front three that is really tricky because they are really having very many available but they are those that cannot be dropped Mohamed Salah I think is going to start Cody Gakpo is going to start and Doe Nunes meaning that Luis Diaz Diego Jota <clears throat> and Fabinho are going to be on the bench waiting showing you that all teams are really having a very decent squad and it's really going to be a very hard game. But the battles that might decide this game of football are going to be between Erling Haaland versus Konate and Virgil van Dijk. That's another battle that we need to face. Then Jack Grealish versus, versus Trent Alexander-Arnold. Um, Riyad Mahrez versus Robertson. And uh, Fabin, it's Rodri versus Fabinho. That's it. The other battle we should think about it's nathan Ake versus muhammad salah it's going to be quite an, interest, an interesting one because muhammad salah looks like in the international break he's gonna have to score in every game that he played for egypt that really makes him a threat and really brings him back to the levels of really scoring goals as we know him then we go to the levels of um <clears throat> the other battle uh doen nunes versus kyle walker all Luis Diaz versus Carl Walker, another one, and obviously Nunes facing the defense or the central defense partnership of Ruben Diaz and um, and Ekanji. So it's really going to be a very interesting game. But things I expect are Liverpool at leave the ball for Man City, and they are going to hit Man City on the break. And I think. For Liverpool to win this game, they just need to capitalize on the number of chances they're going to create because I know they are going to gate onto that back line of Man City. They have that plan to execute that, you get? But how clinic are they going to be? And how solid are they going to be at the back? That's it. Because for Man City, we know what they bring. They'll come in, have the possession, and make it hard for you to play the game of football. But for Liverpool, their transitions are really immense, you get? Their attacking prowess is really out of this world. And if at all they perfect it, they can put even 3-4 past Man City as they did to put 7 past Manchester United because it can get ugly in such a game. But even Man City is going to be creating chances. So it's going to be so much dependent onto the back four and the goalkeeping departments of both teams to see who is really going to win. I think it's really going to be a very close call for me. And my mind is telling me that 
I see a draw written over this game. Though Man City are the favorites to win, but I see a draw written over this game. Uh, because City is vulnerable in its defense. If at all you go past them, you can even score against them. So, and the same applies to Liverpool. They've been really they've been really disturbing when it comes to really defending, especially Virgil van Dijk. <clears throat> Labeled one of the best CDM, the best central defenders in the world. But when you look at how he was tiered apart in the game of France versus Netherlands, even the legends of Netherlands came out and questioned his ability to really keep it solid for the national team. So the difference is when he's playing for Liverpool, he's having Konate. That's it. So let's wait and see how that's going to form it out. But I think my prediction is 1-2-2, one, 1-1 two, two, one, one draw. That's it. If it's a win, I see a Man City win. But 60%, I'm seeing a draw. 40%, a City win. Thank you guys for watching in through your reactions are welcome in the comment section below. Can David remains my name? Don't forget to subscribe and I cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And for the Muslims, guys, I've gotten I've gotten the right word. Eh? Is it is it Juma something? Let me check here. Let me check here. Let me check here. I've seen a Muslim post it, eh? and I think I'm having now the right word to really tell you because you guys. I was here trying to really <clears throat> do the right things, but a Muslim has posted it today and I said, all right, Lord has saved me and I'm now having the right word to tell the Muslims on a Friday like this because it's obviously Juma Karim, not so. And in the fasting, it's all Juma Mubarak. <laughs> That's it. So thank you very much for watching it through. I sign out for now. See you later. And we are returning with the press conference of Mikel Ateta on the Arsenal players are viable and those not available in the fixture of Leeds. Bye-bye.